good morning and welcome to day 19 of the St John's Hartley Whitney Advent Calendar. My name is Trudy Rankin. This morning we're reflecting on the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 5 to 7. Matt set the scene a couple of days ago. The Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus had issued a decree that a population census would be taken for tax purposes and everyone was required to go to their hometown to be counted. As Joseph was a descendant of David, Joseph and Mary had to travel to Bethlehem. So Luke chapter 2 verses 5 to 7 reads, He, to Joseph, went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Just three short sentences to describe the birth of Jesus. I wonder how Mary felt when she was told that she had to travel to Bethlehem. It was a journey which would be fairly familiar to her as she would have made an annual journey with her family to Jerusalem, which is five miles from Bethlehem, to celebrate the Jewish festival of Passover. However, making that long, difficult journey while pregnant would be a different matter. It was around a four day journey by foot, some 90 miles or so, depending on the route. How did they travel? Did they travel on foot? Or was Mary really able to ride on a donkey, as every Christmas nativity play seems to assume? I also wonder whether Joseph and Mary knew that there was a prophecy that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. I think not, given that they were ordinary, humble people and not highly educated scholars or priests. They would not have had a Bible at home to read for themselves, nor could they Google it. But whether they knew or not makes no difference, since they actually had no choice. The occupying Roman power mandated at this point that everyone return to their hometown to register for the census, so ensuring that Mary was in Bethlehem just at the right time to give birth in that town and so fulfil the prophecy. But the thing that stands out to me reflecting on this passage today is that Mary wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Most of us are much more familiar with the translation because there was no room at the inn. Traditional nativity stories usually feature an innkeeper turning Mary and Joseph away with the words, no room at the inn. I'm sure most of us have been in a nativity play with those words. Bethlehem was a poor town and its inn was likely to be comprised of a number of simple enclosed spaces around a courtyard. The rooms were probably unfurnished and without windows, but they would have provided welcome shelter for travellers to rest. Vacant rooms may have been free to use, but the traveller would have paid for food and water, etc. And if the inn was crowded, then it was quite normal for the traveller to use a corner of the courtyard or an enclosed place in the stable area where the animals were kept. The stable would often be in a limestone cave or a grotto, and there is, of course, a very ancient tradition that this was the case in Bethlehem, in the inn in Bethlehem, where Jesus was born. However, a number of translations of the Bible, including the new international version I'm using this morning, translates the Greek word in this story as guest room rather than inn. We read, there was no guest room available. This is the same word, actually, as used later on in Luke when Jesus held the Last Supper in the guest room, which in a family home would normally have been on the upper floor of the house, often built onto the flat roof. Whilst it could mean there was no room in the guest room of an inn, I wonder whether it could be that there was no room in the guest room at the home of some family members. Personally, I think this seems very likely since whilst Roman and foreign travellers stayed in inns, Jews, 
who did not mix with non-Jews and had strict dietary laws, would normally have stayed in the homes of relatives or other Jews when travelling. Throughout the Bible, we hear of the importance of showing hospitality to guests. So perhaps Mary and Joseph tried to find some lodgings at the home of several relatives. But with all their extended families gathered for the census, no one had space for them. It may be that the relative privacy of the cave or other area on the ground floor where the animals slept was in fact a better option in the circumstances than a house crowded with extended family and no privacy as Mary went through labour. We don't know the answers to most of my questions. We can only guess. This is the only description we have of Jesus' birth. The only thing we know is that there was no room in the normal guest quarters and Jesus was born where the animals were kept. His makeshift crib was a manger, a feeding trough for the animals. No royal palace, not even a cosy Israeli family home, just the humblest of beginnings in the stable. I can't help thinking that if a woman had documented this story, she would have included a lot more detail. But the real question remains. Whilst the people of Bethlehem made no room for Jesus to be welcomed as an honoured guest on that first Christmas night, will we make room for him this Christmas? In the 21st century, we normally remember Jesus' birth with a frantic time of activity, shopping for presents, sending cards, school nativity plays and carol concerts, Christmas parties with work colleagues, preparations for lengthy visits by family. Wonderful, fun times. But amidst it all, too often, we forget to make room for Jesus. The Jesus who loves us and wants us to love him in return. Jesus who wants us to trust him and invite him into our daily lives. Jesus who wants to walk with us through life. The pandemic has forced us to cut back on frenetic activity this Christmas. And whilst most of us feel very disappointed by the restrictions on our ability to see loved ones, there is no restriction on the amount of time we spend in the company of Jesus. Perhaps this year we have a special opportunity to make room for him.